Good morning, Evergreen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so glad to see you or be seen by you. Uh, we are, uh, this is the online expression of Evergreen Four Square Church's uh, Sunday service. We also mm -hmm. are meeting in person at uh, the Junior Achievement Building on Sundays. So this goes online and then we have a little different expression in person. Uh, so I uh, want to start off today with prayer and <laughs> uh, thank the Lord. I, I don't know for some of you if mm -hmm. you're just, it depends on what stage of life you're in. If you have a bunch of kids, there's the whole beginning of the year, mm -hmm. school stuff going on. Um, for others, just the fall can be an interesting time of transitions. I know the weather's sort mm -hmm. of transitioning around here, although it's cloudy, but there hasn't been <laughs> much rain. Mm -hmm. And then there's lots of transitions in our lives. Uh, so whether you're doing really well or you're struggling, we want to just start in the beginning with what we do in every service is just to offer our lives to the Lord, mm -hmm. to place yeah. our hearts in his hands and to be able to mm -hmm. just welcome his presence and his leading. Mm -hmm. So Amen. anything you want to add to that before we no, pray? No, that's beautiful. I'll be happy to pray though. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We do offer our, our hearts. We offer our entire beings to you right now, Lord. We thank you that you meet us here. Lord, thank you that your word is chock full of your promises. So much of your word, um, Lord, that I've been thinking about lately is your word that proclaims who you are, that you are the vine and we are the branches, that you are light, you are life. Thank you, Lord. You are the author of truth. You're the author of love. You're the creator. Lord, thank you for um, bringing us each into bringing each of us into being. Thank you that that without you, Lord, we wouldn't exist. And as we even try to exist without you, um, we don't get to exist as fully as we do when we're with you. And I just thank you for that, Lord, that we find our fullness in you, God. Lord, I just pray that you would be with us for the rest of this service. I pray that you'd give us ears to hear, eyes to see. And then I really do believe we, we've been given mouths to proclaim your truth and to proclaim your, your love. Mm. And so I just pray that you would um, empower us even as we hear your word, that you'd empower us with your, your truth, with your spirit, um, to be able to proclaim your truth to others. Mm. Amen. Amen. So uh, if you haven't listened the last couple of weeks, you might want to start, go back to August 28th, uh, our service then. Uh, you can do it after listening to the service or you can just stop and listen to that. Uh, because on August 28th, uh, Jennifer and I made an announcement to our church body and to our denominational leadership that we don't believe scripture speaks against loving same-sex marriage and same-sex attraction. And uh, I gave a theological argument for that, not to try to convince anybody, but let you know that this comes from my literal reading of scripture. Uh, part of reading scripture is to see the context in which it is in. That's how we discover mm -hmm. other things like uh, the scripture doesn't say anything against slavery. It actually tells slaves to be good slaves. But when we read the context, we believe scripture speaks against slavery. Um, scripture speaks against women speaking in churches, right? But as we read the context, mm -hmm. we realize that that's a different context. So a literal reading means for us a belief that women mm -hmm. can fully preach and teach within the church. So anyway, gave that kind of expression and people can disagree mm -hmm. or agree with that. But uh, immediate consequences to that. Uh, the result is the denomination I'm in is revoking in the process of revoking my license and ordination. And uh, with that, uh, Pastor Dan has also mentioned, and he'll, he'll share uh, himself as well, um, that we uh, he's not going to continue on pastoring uh, once my ordination is revoked. So all that process is going in uh, to motion is going to happen. There's an administrative process. We don't want to prolong that process in the sense it's going to happen. Mm. Uh, we feel very strongly, um, I think, for the well-being of the church, for our well-being, for Pastor mm -hmm. Dan's well-being, um, just frankly to honor everybody involved. Our last service is going to be September 25th, and there's no way to say that where it's not. For some of you, it could be very shocking. Others have seen this coming. Uh, Pastor Dan is going to share something, and he even sent a video, and he was like, is this okay if I share it this way? And I want him just to be himself, right? Mm -hmm. He gets to share his heart, then we'll share our heart as well. And in the service, we're still going to preach a message on John today. So, you know, I don't know. Stay with us. By the way, even if you're just like things are your own mental health, you're processing things. 
We're not here to judge you. We're just trying to be here honest before the Lord, be spirit-led, to serve God, and then to live with the consequences of the world we live in. So all that to be said, uh, let's listen to Pastor Dan here, and I will bring him up. And let me see here. i got to make sure we can actually hear him. And uh, here's Pastor Dan's thoughts. Well, good morning, church. As pastors Doug and Jennifer have explained, Sunday, September 25th, will be our last gathering together, our last service. Pastor Doug will have his pastoral license ordination revoked by the Foursquare denomination and Evergreen Foursquare Church will be closed. Uh, our last service will be rather simple. I imagine it not being a lot, all that much different than any other service in that we will worship together through song and prayer. Um, we'll celebrate the goodness of God and we'll love each other well in the end. In the days and weeks following our last service, uh, myself and Pastor Doug, along with the Foursquare leadership, will undergo a process of, of closing down or closing out the operational, administrative, financial aspects of the church. Um, a good deal of these, a good deal of this is, is unfamiliar to me, and I would just ask for your prayers and your grace in these matters. Again, Sunday, September 25th, will be our last service together. Listen, I, in, in no way do I want to band-aid how you might feel hearing uh, this news while still also processing um, so many different things this season. Uh, this is hard news, and I'm sorry. I hope that you know that you have loved us well. You've loved me well. And I can't thank you enough for that. Um, you are and will be in my heart. And even as I'm talking this out, um, I just pray the grace of the Lord over you. Love you all. We'll see you next Sunday. Amen. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for sharing that. Um, just so you know, also, our final service is not, uh, denominational leadership's not going to be there. There'll be no, we ask them just not to be there that they're doing their process, but we want to just have a service. We want to just be able to come together. And we're not doing a big, huge service, because frankly, those of you who are attending Evergreen, part of Evergreen, you know what's going on. And really, we just don't want to make this something bigger. And it just, for us, we just want to care for the people who are here. Mm -hmm. And I think you understand that. So um, also, I want to let you know, in this sense of uh, the abruptness of things, I've heard people say that. Um, just so you know, mm -hmm. the abruptness is outside of our control. We have not abruptly done anything. We've been, you know, processing things, these things for years, have come to our own theological considerations, um, you know, based on our genuine convictions and also counsel and good advice and godly community. Mm -hmm. The problem is, the moment we announce this, abrupt decisions are made. The moment we say, that we have a different view on human sexuality, we lose our license and ordination. The moment we say that, some people call me a heretic and say that I can no longer, you know, tell me to repent and turn to Jesus and uh, I can no longer be their pastor or even their friend. The abruptness is how people respond to us, how the world responds to this. And frankly, I would say, I, I think that whole reality is wrong. It shouldn't be that way. Uh, if we're going to have healthy discussions about any of this, I just don't think it should be that way. And we don't do that with a lot of other things. 
And I, in that, we've even kind of noticed more. You know, I hypothetically understood what was going to happen, but now as I'm experiencing it, I'm realizing how, you know, really terrible it is for anybody to process anything. If you know the moment you say certain words, you'll be cut off uh, from whole communities. Uh, so within that, you know, that's a reality. And I try to, the people pleaser, try to make it sound, you know, okay, but uh, those are those realities. And we do not want to just drag, you know, just kind of, I don't know. I don't know, frankly, the denomination, their process, they work at a large level. I know what they will do and are doing, but the idea of we just have to do what's healthy for our community right now. So uh, next Sunday will be our last service. And frankly, it would be no harder if two Sundays from now was our last service. Uh, and it'll be our last service because this is going to happen. I will no longer be allowed to be a Foursquare pastor. Uh, pastor Dan is not going to Pastor Evergreen once my license is revoked. So mm -hmm. we just think it's best to be able to do this. Also, the last Sunday of this month is my 24th anniversary of pastoring Evergreen Church. And it's frankly my 24th anniversary of pastoring anything. Mm -hmm. uh, Evergreen Foursquare Church is the only church I've ever pastored. Uh, when I was a young man, was I 27? I was brought in and given the opportunity, and Jen and I learned how to pastor, learned how to process things, ministered to thousands of people along the way, and it has been a joy. Uh, mm. I truly am thankful for it. And one of the things I think I can say with a clear conscience is uh, I, I feel good about how I've mm. treated people. And Jen knows this with me. There's never been yelling at people, no power plays, abusive structures. Uh, I'm also happy that whenever I found there was anyone abusing anyone, uh, you know, in the church, I reported them, you know, that we stood for against abuse. We stood for righteousness. We stood for justice and we stood for grace and mercy and love. And I'm, I'm proud of that. I feel good about that. And to be clear with you, because some people don't even understand this, the only reason my license is being revoked is because of the theological position. Mm -hmm. And some people say there must be more. Actually, no. There's nothing else. And I need to say that because the integrity of my witness is important to mm -hmm. me and important to us. And that's it for Dan and I is we're just what we've said to you mm -hmm. is the reality. I know we live in a world full of people who tell half truths and lie and, you know. I think that's really important to mention because I think all of us at least know of, if not haven't, you know, been affected by churches that have closed in unhealthy ways and there are secrets. And this is really this is it. This is all there that there is. And you've been so honest and so forthright with your thoughts and your feelings and your intentions. You and Pastor Dan has as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that I have. And so we, what we know, we've told you. Um, we've told you when we don't know. And we've just really tried to just um, present ourselves as, as honest and, and transparent before you. I don't know if many people have done this, but I'm having to publicly pastor my own firing through several weeks. And um, we did that because we wanted to serve the denomination. We wanted to serve the congregation and we wanted to serve one another. So if it's not being done quite right, you can understand how very difficult it is to do this. We're trying our best with that. So you can continue to pray with us. Uh, for those of you who've sent your encouraging words, we've received so many you know, encouraging, I get nervous. I get a letter in the mail and I'm like, oh boy, what is this? Uh, and my emotions just go, whoosh, you know, but so many of you have showed your love, regardless of your views and theological mm -hmm. convictions, mm -hmm. you right away just showed your love. And that means a lot. Even other Foursquare pastors have reached out and shown their love. And that's been tremendously encouraging. Mm -hmm. And then for those, and I think there are some still listening, those who have been angry and mad at me and upset, uh, I just ask you to go before the Lord. Uh, even if I'm totally wrong in what I'm doing, God will give you his heart. Mm -hmm. And I know the scripture says, love your enemies and do good to them. So whether you consider me a friend or an enemy, I know that God will show you how to love. And he doesn't want you to be destroyed. He doesn't mm -hmm. want you to be hurt. He doesn't want you to live in bitterness or fear, yeah. anger. Yeah. And um, there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear. Uh, so mm -hmm. just encourage you, go to the Lord. Like even here, you're like, I don't want to hear that from you. Okay, don't. <laughs> but go to the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord will help you. I so know in the good. last 24 years of ministry, he's helped me when I've been frustrated and mad. 
mm-hmm. at people. And he always says love to give. Mm, uh, amen. I've seen that with Jennifer as well. In private and publicly, we, we genuinely want the best for every single person that we've had the privilege to minister with or alongside. Mm-hmm. Amen. I don't like talking about this either. I don't. I don't know any way around it. All right, you want to you want to do a little bit of a message here? Can't really fix it. So <clears throat> no, I can't. I just, just get to walk through it and get to walk. You can keep praying for me. We okay. can't. You know, the next steps and stuff, guys. I cannot promise you anything. We're we're just trying to figure out how mm-hmm. to make, take next steps. So we're not starting another church. We're not, and I know that might bother some people or hurt. We're not trying to abandon people. We're just trying to heal. Mm-hmm and discern and process and figure out how to survive even financially you know just the things that we all try to do right so that's our goal to serve god and it, it, i know there's consequences for you but i hope you would understand that the decisions we're making are we're trying our best we really are okay all right so i want to do this this i think this is going to be my last sermon in john because our last sunday i don't think i will i might bring a scripture from john but i'm just going to be a little bit more free on our last (laughs) sunday uh but you know i wanted to get to uh at least the end of jesus's speech this long section where he's been talking to the disciples Mm -hmm. you know it's around the last supper and it just keeps going and we're like we don't really know it's just this long section in john that's unique Mm -hmm. to john and we're seeing the same themes over and over again and so i was going to read a whole part of one of the chapters and then i thought no i just want to read the end of it and so you guys are going to have to read the bible yourself which is true <laughs> you know even if i did get through all this you'd have to do that and i've so much enjoyed going through john it's been a gift and it's just it's just confirmed my peace with jesus yeah. and my peace with god it's as been so just, timely hasn't it same theme over and over and over again what is central Mm-hmm. and what is secondary we couldn't have planned it yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, it's just been a grace just, gift it's been a miracle really even like i didn't sit here like well, let's make sure we're preaching on this when this happens that we've just this is where we've been at mm-hmm. so it's been pretty nice so i want to read john 18 20 to 25 and then i have mm-hmm. some words about this mysterious wonderful relational gospel mm-hmm. okay so john 18 20 to 26 if i can pull that up here and we will put ourselves in the box again I realize I have two Word documents open. I hope this is the right one. That looks like it. There we go. John 18, 20 to 26. Uh, I am not asking on behalf of these alone, <coughs> excuse me, but also for those who believe in me through their words. So he's speaking to us, by the way. I'm not asking, he's talking to his disciples, but he's actually, he's actually praying right now. Jesus is praying. He says, I'm not asking on behalf of these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Mm. It's so beautiful. Let them be one. And then he says, be one as I am one with the Father and the Spirit. Let them be one in me. So it's a very powerful, you could spend hours, you could spend your whole life just meditating upon that scripture. But let's continue. 22. The glory which you have given me, I also have given to them, so that they may be one, just as we are one, mm. I and them, and you and me, mm. that they may be perfect, perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me, and you love them, just as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world." Righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have made your name known to them, and will make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I Mm. in them. And I have made your name known. Why has Jesus made the Father's name known? Why? Why is this? What is this all about? Why has Jesus come? I have made your name known to them, and will make it known so that the love with which you loved me may be in them Mm. and I in them. Mm. So uh, I wrote down some thoughts here, which people call a sermon. I think I'll still call it a sermon. Uh, The gospel is a wonderful, mysterious, Mm. relational story. And in the very beginning, it starts with love, and community. Mm-hmm. 
And Jesus says this here. It starts existence, and we struggle. What is existence? Whatever existence is uh, begins, although there is no beginning to it, begins with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. It's a mystery. We don't understand. Our God is one. Three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Whenever you try to communicate that, you get it wrong. The Trinity is a term we use, a theological term that's not in the Bible. It's our best attempt yeah. to explain this reality mm -hmm. that our God is one God, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, from the beginning, the Father has loved me, and I have loved the Father. So from the beginning, we have one God, but from the beginning, we have loving community, that there has been loving community from the beginning. Existence is loving community. God is loving community, mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, our God is a creative God, and sometimes people say, well, then why is creation created? Well, at some level, because God is creation, God creates. Mm -hmm. And so God created, took of himself, and made this expression, which we call creation. Creation is within God, not outside God. Creation exists within him because God exists in all things. And God, who is love, mm. created. And in creation, he continued to create community. Amen. God created humans. And we see from the very beginning that we have in the beginning, there's one God, but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then God creates Adam and God says, it's not good for man to be alone. So for humans to be human, they must be a community. You've heard the evangelist say, you know, if you were the only, maybe you haven't, if you were the only person on this earth, God would have died for you. Jesus would have died for you. And I get that concept. But I don't think that's what would have happened. If you were the only person on this earth, God would have created another person. Because to be human is to be in community. And this has been a heart of mine from the beginning, a heart of ours, that to be human is to be in community. I am more human in community. It is not good for man to be alone or woman to be alone or for humans to be alone. It's not good for human. It must be humans. Hmm. So God created community, and in creating community, he also created love, more love. His love expanded. And so now in community, what do we have? We're created, so we have the ability to love God. And we have the ability to love one another. And because love has choice, and this is like, sometimes theologians argue about this, but I think just by living, we know that love must have choice. Mm-hmm. We know in every situation, my wife does not love me because she's held hostage, mm -hmm. because she has no choice. And I love her, not because I'm forced to love her. Mm -hmm. There is a choice. She extended love to me and allowed me to accept or reject that offer. I extended love to her mm -hmm. and allowed her to accept or reject that offer. And God created us to be an expression of love. So he allowed us to say yes or no to loving him and yes or no mm -hmm. to loving each yeah. other. And that's where we see evil. That's where we see darkness, but that's also where we see love. And, and it seems if anything, humans are uniquely positioned to be like this, unlike any other created being, that we can say yes to loving God or no. We can value God's creation or not value God's creation. We can value and love other people mm -hmm are not value and love other people. So God from the beginning is community and God is love. God creates us and we become community and he gives us the ability to enter into that love. But what happens? We choose rebellion. We yeah. choose other than God. Mm -hmm. I choose what? Not your way, God, but my way. And I choose not our needs, but my needs. Mm -hmm. Cain chooses his way over Abel's way. One must win. Cain must win, so he kills Abel. One must get what they want, so Cain tries to kill God in the sense that I want my own way, my own justice, my own righteousness, my own choices. What happened when we disobeyed? Well, it went after what was from the beginning, destroyed community. Mm -hmm. 
brokenness between Adam and Eve, brokenness in their family between Cain and Abel, death, destruction, mm -hmm. murder. The things that God had created the most sacred and the whole point of being yeah. really got destroyed and got marred and got twisted. Immediately. Mm -hmm. from the beginning. Sometimes people yeah. say, oh, the world's really falling apart. I'm like, "Did do you know what happened in the beginning? Because the Bible says that Cain kills Abel. There's, there's nothing more terrible than a brother killing a brother. You know, a stranger killing strangers is terrible. But there's no connection between strangers. So maybe you could rationalize, well, I guess a stranger being disconnected from other strangers could do something horrible. You know, these mass shootings and horrible things we hear about. I mean, there's no logic to that. That's madness. But it's greater madness that a brother would kill a brother, Gr grew up together, same parents, same purpose, same yeah. home. It's madness and from the beginning. When we chose not to love God, it created death, hmm. death of community and the death of love, destroyed expressions of love. However, <laughs> however, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not judged. The one who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Jesus has made known to us the Father's love, mm. the love that was from the beginning. And this is what we saw when the first scripture we read. Jesus says, I have been in love with the Father, and the Father has loved me, and the Spirit, I love the Spirit, Spirit loves me, the Father, the glory. It's all, it's been a love relationship from the beginning, and I have come to usher you back into that relationship, mm. to bring you home. To say, to make known, known the name of the Father. I love that to you, make known. You understand all of humanity comes from God. We at some God took a part of himself and allowed us to exist. And then he allowed us to be other than him. He allowed there to be conflict within his own existence so that there would be a loving relationship. And Jesus says, I have come to make known that love which you have rejected. I have come to make known that love which you have chosen to crucify. I've come to make the Father's love known. And that's what we've seen in John over and over again. Jesus saying, I am here to make God's love known. That I am love, God is love. Whoever loves me loves the Father, and the Father loves them. And then he keeps throwing in this, and the Holy Spirit will reveal all these things. Just as the Holy Spirit reveals the Father's love to me now, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you my love, which is the Father's love from the beginning. That's so amazing. So much connection, so much relationship, all for the purpose of love, being loved. Amen. Jesus has opened the door for us to receive God's love completely. Mm -hmm. The goal is to bring us completely. He says it in it a couple times. Just as I am in the Father, let them be in me. Amen. And let them be one so that they can experience the love which I had in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And this is not just a theory, like Jesus loves you, that's a theory. That's a. It's not just a theological conviction. It is what? A relationship. Amen. That Jesus has come not just to bring us a theology, but to bring us tangible love and tangible community. Mm. That our resurrected Savior is present with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that what? We can abide in and with God, and God can abide in and with us, and that we can abide as one in God. Amen. We have access to the love and community that was from the beginning. And reading through John, I don't want us to miss this because Jesus summarizes it here. This prayer that I have for my disciples also is a prayer for those who received later. This love that I had from the beginning, the Father loving the Son, the Son loving the Father, the Father loving the Spirit, the Spirit loving the Father. 
uh, Jesus loving the Spirit, Spirit loving Jesus, however you want to triangulate this mystery of our one God but three persons, Jesus came to earth and mm -hmm. everything he said and did and preached was so that we could experience that oneness from the beginning with God, that we could be in that community and Amen. be one. So what's our job? Our job is to reveal this love and community to others, to usher people in, to invite them into this mystery that we have been invited into, that Christ Jesus came to rescue us from our alienation, aloneness, and distance to bring us back into the family of God. Mm -hmm. When we abide in this good news, we truly are one. You know, you see those passages about let them be one as we are one. And suddenly say, okay, well, how do we can be one? Well, let's all uh, find a statement that we can agree upon. Let's all find and we, you know, we assign a petition that we can agree upon or, or figure out the, you know, the denominational distinctives we can agree upon and then we'll be one. But that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says our oneness is in being in Christ mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit. It is a relationship. We sure grasp at a lot of things to try to create that community, don't we? Yeah. And not that those things are bad things, but those things, those things that we agree upon or that we have common interest in, those might, you know, bind us together for a little while. But really, when you talk about that depth of connectedness, it's really that community can only be found in the Lord. Amen. It can. It's not only can only be. It will be found. Mm -hmm. And I've often said, like, I didn't come to grow a church. I've, I've really not worked to grow a church, but to be light and life for the larger church. And right now, the expression of Evergreen Foursquare as an institution is coming to an end. But the unity that we have is not an issue of living within some sort of institutional mm -hmm. boundary. It's That's not our unity. Our unity is in Christ. Mm -hmm. And nothing can separate us from that. So how do we find oneness in Christ, unity in Christ? Mm -hmm. Is we go and we exist within this gospel, making room for the fellowship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, living our lives in alignment with that fullness. And when you live within and abide within the gospel, you'll find others who are living within and abiding in, abiding in the gospel, and you will find a oneness. Mm -hmm. That's why right now we are one with people all around the world, one with people all throughout history who made Christ and his story our story. We exist with the Father and the Son and the Spirit in this loving, glorious community. Amen. And that's what you press into yeah. in every season. Mm -hmm. in every, And that's why Jesus is saying these things at the end of before he goes to the cross because there's all kinds of things that are going to happen to you. He's going to be persecuted. There's going to be trials. Uh, you're going to be hated. But if you understand this, that I have brought you into relationship, mm -hmm. I've brought you into this love, then you don't have to be afraid. Amen. And you will be one. Mm -hmm. You will be one because you're in me and I am one with the Father and the Father is one with me and you are now one with us. Mm -hmm. To be one is not to sign a contract of agreement. To be one is to make room for the fullness of God yes. through the indwelling of God's Spirit in us, in Jesus. Jesus made a way for us to be one. This is the message I will gladly live for the rest of my life. And I want to invite you to do it as well. I have walked a long time with some of you, and I am not your oneness and you are not mine. Mm -hmm. But here's the good news. Before any of this was created, at least in the expression we can understand now, God existed from the beginning. And God existed as loving community. And God existed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's so good, yeah. And God in his heart, in his being, created. Mm -hmm. And he created more love. And he created more love. And you're an expression of the more love that God created. Mm -hmm. And he created it for this purpose, that you would dwell in the love that is from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And even though you've rebelled 
and I've rebelled and humanity's rebelled, God did not let us have the final word. He gets the final word. Amen. He died for our sins. He restored us to relationship with him. He gave us love. He gave us community. And we are thankful for this gift. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for your presence and your goodness. Amen. We thank you that you are the one who speaks. So we ask that you would speak to our hearts and you'd help us to respond to what you've spoken. Mm -hmm. We thank you for love and community. We ask that you would help us to be led by you, mm -hmm. to be led by the light and life that is in you. And to, in every season of our life, especially this season, to embrace this prayer that you prayed over the disciples, that it's our time. Mm -hmm. It's our time to share this love that was from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is our time. And we're not going to waste a week, a month, a year, or a moment. We're going to love the way you have loved us from the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Love you guys. We will see you next week, okay? Uh, Wednesday night. I don't know if we're having one or not. If we do, I'll probably just be reading through John at uh, the end. But I don't know. If I don't, it's just like it's, you know, there's enough going on. We'll have one more service on Sunday. We will have an online expression, and we will have an in-person expression at 10 a.m. Okay. Amen.